The Lord be with you. And also with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you. On the first day of the week, Mary of Magdala came to the tomb early in the morning while it was still dark and saw the tomb had the stone had been removed from the, from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and to the other disciple whom Jesus loved and told them, They have taken the Lord from the tomb, and we don't know where they have put him. So Peter and the other disciple went out and came to the tomb. They both ran, but the other disciple ran faster than Peter and arrived at the tomb first. He bent down and saw the burial cloths there. But he did not go in. When Simon Peter arrived after him, he went into the tomb and saw the burial cloths there, and the cloth that had covered his head, not with the burial cloths, but rolled up in a separate place. Then the other disciple also went in, the one who had arrived at the tomb first, and he saw and believed. For they did not yet understand the scripture that he had to rise from the dead. My dear brothers and sisters, the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. We've been doing this together for several years. And we gather on this particular Sunday morning to celebrate the central Christian experience. And that central reality we call the resurrection. We celebrate the resurrection from, uh, of Jesus from the dead. And it's changed all of history and it has impacted all of our lives. It means something to us. But I want to say something ahead of time about what the resurrection was not. The resurrection was not a resuscitation of a mortal corpse. That's another story written by Mary Shelley <laughs> called Frankenstein. But that wasn't the resurrection of Christ. He was put into the tomb, a mortal body that was murdered. He was murdered in a terrible act of violence on the cross, which was designed to create a death that was so agonizing and so painful, it was meant to torture the victim. Jesus was brutally murdered in an unjust act of violence on a cross, which we look at as being a nice religious symbol. But in his time, this was a symbol of shame and of death. But something happened that transformed the meaning of this ugly symbol of human violence. It was the resurrection of Christ. God raised him from the dead. And then the promise to us is that if we participate in his death, join ourselves with him, we will be raised with him in his victory over death. So Easter is all about life prevailing over death. When they removed the dead body of Jesus off the cross and they laid him in the tomb and they shut the stone over the tomb, the sepulcher, 
they buried all of their hearts with him. They were grieving the loss of Jesus and they expected him to be running the country and instead he's now dead. You can imagine the despair, the utter despair that they felt. And then when this crazy woman, my name of Mary Magdalene tells, goes back to the disciples who were hiding at this time to tell them that she saw the Lord alive and the tomb was empty. Um, they ran and found out what had happened and they were not sure what to think. They encountered another invisible reality that's around us all the time. So we got this idea, especially as Christians, but especially as Catholic Christians, that somehow the whole point of life is to go to heaven and have a life that would enable you to go to heaven. We all think about that. We're afraid of death. And so we think life is about going to heaven. That's not the message of Jesus. The message of Jesus is that we are to bring heaven to earth. It's a dynamic reality we enter to even at this point in our lives. And we are here uh, to celebrate the resurrection because when Christ was raised from the dead, he dealt a mortal blow to death itself. And the real enemy of humanity is not you, is not your bad deeds. The real enemy of humanity is death itself. Christ defeats death. And when he defeats death, he tears open the veil so that we can see heaven that is all around us. And that heaven, my brothers and sisters, we are commissioned to bring to the earth. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. Amen. Amen. Please stand and face back here. My dear brothers and sisters, let us now ask God, the Almighty Father, to bless this font of water, that those reborn in it may be made one with his adopted children in the risen Christ. Let us pray. Father, you give us grace through sacramental signs, which reveal to us the wonders of your unseen power. In baptism, we use your gift of water, which you have made a sign of the grace you give us in this holy sacrament. At the very dawn of creation, your spirit hovered over the waters, making them the wellspring of all holiness and of all life. The waters of the great flood, you made a sign of the waters of baptism that make an end to sin and a new beginning of goodness. Through the waters of the Red Sea, you led Israel out of slavery to be an image of God's holy people, set free from sin by baptism. In the waters of the Jordan River, your holy son Jesus was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. Your beloved son willed that water and blood should flow from his side as he hung upon the cross. 
After his glorious resurrection, he told his disciples, Go out and teach all nations, baptizing them into the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Now, Father, look with love upon your church and unseal for her the fountain of baptism. By the power of the Holy Spirit, give to this water of the font the grace of your Son, Jesus. You've created humanity in your own divine image. Cleanse us from all sin and a new birth of life by this water and the Holy Spirit. We ask you, Father, with your Son, to send the Holy Spirit upon the waters of this pond. May all who are buried with Christ in the death of baptism rise also with Him to newness of life. We ask this through Christ our Lord and Savior. Amen. 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 And so, my brothers and sisters, I ask you, do you renounce Satan? I do. I do. do you renounce all his works? I do. Do you renounce all his empty promises? I do. I do. to receive the holy water and make the sign of the cross with the holy water as a means of renewing your own baptism and your own baptismal promises. So please come forward. Let's make two lines, one on this side and one in the middle. No.
Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your disciples, I give you peace, my peace I leave you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom, where you live forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. This will become for us the bread of life. Blessed, Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us the cup of our salvation.
light and the depth, echo the silent music of your praise. In the beginning, your word summoned light, night withdrew, and creation dawn. As ages passed unseen, waters gathered in the face of the earth, and life appeared. When the times at last had ripened, and the earth grown full in abundance, you created in your image man and woman, the crown of all creation. You gave us breath and speech, that all the living might find a voice to sing your praise. O oh, Holy God, how wonderful the work of your hands. You restored the beauty of your image when sin had scarred the earth. As a mother tenderly gathers her children, you embrace a people as your own and fill them with longing for a peace that would last and for a justice that would never fail. Through countless generations, your people hungered for the bread of freedom. From them you raised up Jesus, the living bread, in whom ancient hungers were satisfied. He healed the sick, though he himself would suffer. He offered life to sinners, though death would hunt him down. But with a love stronger than death, he opened wide his arms and surrender is the Spirit. Lord, you are holy indeed, the fountain of all holiness. Let your Spirit come upon these gifts to make them holy, so that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the night before he met with death, Jesus came to table with those he loved. He took bread and blessed you, O God of all creation. He broke the bread among his disciples and said, Take this, all of you, and eat it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. When supper was ended, he took the cup. Again, he gave you thanks and praise, and said to his disciples, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the God of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant. It will be shed for you and for all, so that sins may be forgiven. Do this in memory of me. Oh 
Let's pray for the coming of the kingdom as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. As the mother comforts her children, comfort us and grant us peace in our day. In your mercy, deliver us from every evil and protect us all fear as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior and brother, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, power, and glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. 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 sacrament of the altar. I love you above all things and long for you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. As though you have already come, I embrace you and unite myself entirely to you, never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
forever. Amen. Amen. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia, alleluia. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and in the hour of our death. Amen. Do we have any announcements? Yes. You may be seated for the announcement. <laughs> Bible study will resume this week on Wednesday at House of Ruth and Junior. Those who can come for dinner at 6 o'clock and those who can come online at 7, we will be, we, be continuing our study of Ezekiel. But I want to tell you one thing that I hope you will all be able to follow up on. If you have Netflix, they now have a three-part documentary on Moses, and the commentators are Jewish, Christian, and Islamic, and it is fabulous. So if you have Netflix, look for Moses. It's three parts. It's well worth your time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, my Thank you, my Jenny? First of all, I want to wish everybody a happy Easter, and I want an applause for our fantastic party. <laughs> I also want to ex um, personally extend um, an invitation to come join us in the gathering hall. I know it's Easter, but it's a good fellowship, even if it's just a for, for a few minutes to say hi, because we have some faces in the audience or in church today. Um, I know a lot of us would like to say hi to them. Okay, this is the drum roll, please. This is the last Sunday of the month in our drawing for one hundred dollars. <laughs> 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 Um, I would like to invite Irene and Mary to come up and grab the baskets of eggs so that everyone can receive an egg, uh, one on either side, and Happy Easter to you all. And just so you know, we know that there's a few people back here that, uh, well, one or two that we don't usually see, but we are so blessed to have. Of course, our dear Megan Day. Thank you, Lord. Victor on percussion, George on bass, and of course Tanya, Terry, David, who are always faithfully with us. And a very special thanks to a very special young man who we've known for many years. Um, he comes and graces us with his beautiful song um, when he can. He's a busy guy. But uh, I want you all to meet Adrian Lopez. And if all of you would stand up, I'd like to thank Paul for his beautiful <laughs> Just a quick reminder, we have a Bible study Wednesday evenings right here at the church at 515 and all are welcome. Rosary at 515 here on Wednesday, so please come and join us. And I know is there anything else? Okay. So, my dear brothers and sisters, let us go forth to love and serve one another as we proclaim He is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thanks be to God. This holy mass has ended.
Oh